Welcome to Unbreakable Latina. Hi guys, welcome back to Unbreakable Latina. Today I have a very special guest, Vianney Harelli. Vianney is a poet, visual artist, content creator, and a fellow amigis. Welcome to Unbreakable Latina, Vianney. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm excited to have you too. Um, I discovered you on TikTok. I saw one of your videos and it talked about when people tell you, but he's your father, but she's your mother. And in the video you said, but what about me? And I related so much to this video since most of you know, I do not have a relationship with my father. I've been told this so many times, like he's your dad. You only get one dad. Your video made me feel like I wasn't alone and finally someone was talking about what I've been thinking for so long. One of my favorite parts about, because posting my work online is so scary, especially when it's something so vulnerable, but I think something that kind of motivates me to keep doing it despite the fear and also embarrass me because it's kind of embarrassing to to put yourself out there that way. Um, I think it's the other side of it and what's rewarding about it is people relating to it and a lot of people tell me oh you make me feel less alone but in reality too they make me feel less alone and my readers make me feel less alone because I'm sharing these things where I felt alone and the feelings I felt alone in and once I see people that resonate with it or people like you right now telling me like you know like how I felt it and it's something that I'm I've been going through and it's a feeling that I had it also makes me as the writer feel less alone honestly when I started reading your book I realized that other people are going through the same thing and for a long time I felt like it's only me it's only me going through the same thing and with your poetry I'm sure you get this a lot like I've, I've seen you talking to other people and it's just so nice to relate to someone, and I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. So let's tell them a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Tijuana. So I was born in San Diego, but literally my mom, like, she just crossed so I could be born in San Diego. Y luego ya nos regresamos a Tijuana, and then I lived in Tijuana from, like, days after I was born until I was 18. And... But I went to school in San Diego from sixth grade through all of high school. So for six years, I was I would wake up er, very early in the morning and then cross the border to go to school. And then right out of high school, uh, when I graduated, I decided to move to San Francisco to go to college. And then from then, I, I lived in San Francisco for a while. When did you discover that you wanted to start writing poetry? So the moment I discovered that I wanted to write... It's a, it's a story I always tell, but it's, it's because it's a story that's very, that I always keep in my heart because I tell people that when you know, you know, it, just like with, you know, we talk about this when, with people like, oh, when you know, you know, with your person or, you know, like moments. But for me, it was when you know, you know, but for a career moment and for a purpose moment. And it happened when I was in sixth grade and I was, I believe I was like 12 yeah, I was 12 years old, and it was my first year in the U.S., going to school in the U.S., so I was, I was pretty, I felt pretty lost, I'm pretty out of place, um, I didn't know how to read English, I knew how to speak it, but like the basics, you know, because um, when I went, I went to a Catholic school in Tijuana, y como que nos enseñaban inglés, así como lo básico y todo, but I remember my first day of school in sixth grade, and I also tell this story a lot. Like, my teacher asked me to read a, one of the phrases in the children's book that they were reading. Y no le entendía nada. Like, I couldn't understand any of it. And I just felt so embarrassed because, you know, people were waiting for me to read. Y empecé a llorar porque me dio mucha vergüenza. But then, like, through the semester, as the semester went on, there was a writing contest for different levels in the county, San Diego County. Había como nivel de elementary school, middle school, high school, adults. And it was an essay contest and my teacher asked me to participate in it. Because I think my mom told them that I like to write. Because even before that, I was already writing. I had my little like journals and like diaries and stuff. And so my teacher, Mr. Rosillo, he was like, oh, I want you to go get on this contest and write an essay. And I said, no, because I was like, if I can't read like a children's book, como vas a escribir un essay de five paragraphs? So I was just like, no, I don't want to do it. And he was like, come on, I'll help you. We'll use Google Translate. We'll use the dictionary and we'll just do it and we'll see what happens. So I did it. He helped me. 
and then two weeks later i won the contest he called my mom and he told her and she was just so happy and we went to the award ceremony and i had to read my my essay y ahí lo leía como pude con mi inglés así todo mucho and then i saw people crying and i saw people in the audience crying there was like a bunch of people a bunch of like people i didn't know people that didn't know me and so when i saw them crying and i saw you know my mom crying my dad my teacher was like así como emotional and that was the moment i remember looking up and thinking like wow these people are crying over my words so my words must have some kind of power to make them feel something so strong to the point that they don't even know me and they don't even know my story and they're they're crying and they're feeling something so that's when i told myself okay i have something there like i i must have some kind of talent and then after that i just continued pursuing that dream so it's been about over 15 years that i've been like siguiendo este sueño y como que trabajando para pues para lograrlo what a beautiful story um do you remember what you wrote yeah i do actually um it was about because the the theme of the essay contest was writing about the hardest border you have ever crossed and but it was mostly to be about because we were in san diego and you know how san diego is like a it's como fronterizo it's like tijuana and san diego so it was meant for people to write about you know crossing the border the immigrant experience but por lo mismo de que yo no entendía mucho el inglés i and also because i, I feel like also as a poet i always give things meaning like metaphors and like i'm like oh what's the symbolism behind this so i took the border as a a symbolism for an obstacle for something hard i didn't think of it as like a physical border so i decided to write about my mom has like this condition in sus huesos que se llama fibromalgia something like that and um so during the winter or when it's really cold weather my mom like it's really hard for my mom to do like basic things like get out of get out of the bed move walk and so growing up seeing my mom like that and, and suffer that way it was very it was very hard for me especially as an oldest daughter and i one thing that i fully remember like a very vivid memory was whenever we would go to places like big bear places not big bear julian donde ne hay nieve my mom would stay in the car because she couldn't go into the snow because that the cold weather or, or como el frío le activaba esa condición so I wrote about that and how seeing her as her daughter struggle with like basic human activities was very hard for me. And that was the essay that that won. And so I don't forget it because my mom always reminds me of it. And she always, so I was like, ¿Te acuerdas que tu primer concurso que ganaste fue porque escribiste de mí? And I'm like, okay, mom. Yeah, so I don't forget it because my mom doesn't let me forget it. <laughs> What made you start sharing your poetry on social media? Or when did your journey begin on social media? Ooh, I've been on social media for a long time. I started sharing my work in, it was either 2014 or 2015. So it's been about nine years, almost a decade. And I started on Tumblr. So I, my poetry before, my original, original po poetry, like the OG was in Spanish, like full Spanish. Y yo me acuerdo que yo la compartía en Tumblr, ahí ponía como que mi poesía, and I would add like photos, because a, a lot of my poetry, still now to this day, is very inspired by visuals, different visuals, like either paintings or uh, buildings, things I see, memories I have that are very like vividly ingrained in my brain. And so I used to post like photos and then a poem under the photos. Y yo me acuerdo que en Tumblr... I didn't have the many followers I have now, but I did have followers in Latino America. I had people like from Chile. I had people from Argentina that would message me. And so it was cool on Tumblr because there was like a community there. And then I went through like a Twitter phase where I would like post like little phrases on Twitter. Then I had a YouTube phase where I had a YouTube channel. That was when I was in college. Y ahí ponía uh, poesía, subía como que videos de mis poemas cuando iba a viajes y eso. And then I went through Instagram, you know, where I upload like my, my written poetry in visual form. And, but what really, really helped my poetry take off and what really got me to the place that I am today as a writer with my books and with my workshops and my events was TikTok. And I never, ever thought that it would be TikTok that would be the thing to kind of 
help my career because at the beginning when TikTok apenas salió, me acuerdo que yo decía, ay, esto es como, that's not an app for me, like, that's for younger people. Like, I'm not going to do a funny dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because at first it was just for that, right? It was, like, for music and dance. So I was like, um, yeah, I'm not going to do that because I'm, soy muy penosa y pues yo no hago eso, yo no bailo bien, yo no canto, ni nada. Entonces, I was like, when I saw people joining, I was like, okay, that's cool for them, but it's just not for me. Like, I'm going to stay in Instagram. Y luego como que... No sé, como que dije, empecé a ver más gente y más gente, y luego pasó la pandemia. Eh, pues ya sabes, como que we were stuck at home. Sorry, my dog and my cat are fighting in the back. Um, but, so, there was nothing to do. I had no job, I was unemployed. Ya para ese entonces en la pandemia, yo vivía en Tijuana, and I started therapy because of the pandemic kind of brought up a lot of things in me. Also being in Tijuana, close to my family, como que se abrieron muchas heridas. So I was writing poetry a lot. I was writing poetry and I saw more and more people download TikTok, talk about it. So I was like, maybe I'll try TikTok, but I want to do it from a writer point. You know, like I want to upload my poetry. I'm not going to do dances. I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to do anything because I'm just not good at it. Entonces dije, ¿cómo le puedo hacer? And I remember in YouTube, when I had a YouTube, a veces subía así como poesía with visuals and video clips. So I wanted to give it a second try to my poetry porque en YouTube no tenía seguidores, like to be honest, I was just uploading for like 10 people. Y entonces ya decidí, I, I decided to give it a try, como que de repente, so unexpectedly, some of my videos and my poems went viral. I think one of them was the one you were talking about, the one about What About Me, that one had like 1.2 million, and I think from there, like, a la gente como que, pues se relacionaba con mi poesía y pues como que de ahí ya, todo fue like... Yeah, it was it was crazy. I was not expecting it, but I'm also very grateful for it. Yeah, a lot of people related because I remember he keep, I kept hearing your audios, and I'm like, who is this girl? So then I started following you, and then we started like chatting here and there, and I was like, wow, like the power of just putting your work out there. Were you ever like? scared to put it out there just to see like que va decir la gente you know how in our culture it's always that like what's your family gonna say and you you have this poetry that you've been writing for yourself and for your books but not putting it on social media where it's more easy to access it mm -hmm. yes at the beginning i was i was very nervous and como más por mi familia not not so much for you know, my friends and people that know me in real life that are outside of, like, biological family, pero más como por mis tías, because you know how tías are, like, casi chismosas y cizañosas, because um, I've had tías that don't even follow me on Instagram, and they would somehow send my mom, like, screenshots of things that I would post and things like that, so I'm like, okay, so probablemente in TikTok, it's easier for people to see your stuff because of, you know, how the algorithm works, entonces sí me daban muchos nervios, y más porque también... At the beginning of my like TikTok journey, subía mucho de my abusive relationship and getting and healing from an abusive relationship and relearning to love and unlearning, you know, things that you learn to survive in a toxic or abusive relationship. Y también eso me daba muchos nervios que le llegaran como to my abusive ex or to, you know, the friends or anything. So I was very nervous at first, pero eso como que no me detuvo, como que había algo más que me motivaba como que era más el querer como desahogarme, ajá, uh -huh, and release, and I remember I kept telling myself, like, pues si lo ven, what are they gonna do, <laughs> like, what, really, what are they gonna do, like, yeah, they can send me messages and, you know, try to, I don't know, like, gaslight me or just be mean, but at the end of the day, it's just, I cannot do anything about how they react to it. And I, I kept thinking also, well, if my poetry is about setting boundaries and also learning that the way someone treats you or the way that someone loves you is not a reflection of you, but really of them and their wounds and the things that they haven't healed, then I really need to apply it to myself as well. So the way that people react to my poetry really has nothing to do with me and I cannot control how they react to it because in my puede despertar algo en esas personas que tal vez esas personas no han sanado y pues ni modo es something that they have to face themselves and I, I kept telling okay someone is, sends me a mean message or something I'll just block them pero hasta ahorita no ha pasado nada con mi familia I think if not the opposite has happened like with with my mom like it it has helped me and my mom in our relationship being able to put my work out there and having my books published and I think 
algo que sí ha ayudado a mi mamá que me entienda es mi poesía. And I never expected that, but it's, it's just one of the beautiful things that has come out of me publishing my work and having it out there. So, todavía me da nervios. Todavía como que estoy esperando a que alguien me mande un mensaje o no sé, pero como que... It's just one of those things that is not black and white. Like, I tell myself, like, no, it's out of your control. Like, you're not responsible for people's feelings and you're not responsible to people's reactions to your story because this is your truth and this is your story. So, no puedes hacer nada. You're just sharing it. No la vas a cambiar y no te vas a quedar callada nomás por estas personas. But at the same time, it's still scary and it's still, like, sí me da un poquito de como ansiedad, pero hasta ahorita todo bien. Qué bueno. Um, you've published a few books, right? So how many have you have you wrote? Or what was your first book that you wrote? My first book was Girasol, and that one got published. That one got published through a publishing house in the Bay Area, and I was able to publish it. I was, I think, I was twenty two or twenty three. So that was five years ago, and I was able to publish it because I won a writing contest. Que se llamaba Lucha Libro. And it was a contest for like five writers. Y traemos como una máscara de luchador y todo. And we would go up to a ring and write a story. We had to write a story. And they gave us five minutes. And it was really cool because you had a computer and you were supposed to write your story in five minutes. But then the computer was connected to a projector. And so the audience could see as you were typing. It was like live. So people were able to see. And so you would write your story. And then there was three judges. Y escogían pues la que más les gustaba y la que quisieran... They were supposed to choose an author that they wanted to hear more from or read more from. Entonces, I won that contest and one of the prizes was getting your book published. Entonces, eh, originally it was going to be called um, Mi Amor, Te Tuve Que Matar Antes De Que Tú Me Mataras A Mí. And it was a poetry collection, uh, but the publishers wanted a shorter title and something that people could pronounce and remember more easily. Entonces, lo cambiaron a Girasol because I do a lot of Um, references to like sunflowers y girasoles y plantas y flores entonces that was my first book but it was really short it was like 30 something pages it was super super short and for that one I was in contract with the publishers for three years entonces este sí estuvo como del 2018 hasta el 2021 um, but I didn't have the experience that I wanted to have as a writer and I, my book did not get the como que no yeah like the the support that I wanted it to have you know as a writer and I just thought the experience would be something different and something better entonces ya por eso cuando pasó pues todo eso y se acabó el contrato I, I didn't continue it and I decided that my next two books which I, are the ones that I, I saw now the plants are burning and then the here are the tears I we didn't cry I decided to self-publish them on my own because I just, because of that experience, learning from everything that I didn't like or wish that it had been better, I took it and I was like, okay, whatever I didn't like here, I'll do it better with myself and for myself so that I can do this and just rely on myself. Entonces, si son esos los libros que tengo, so, son tres. Do you have those books in stock mm -hmm. now where people can buy them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first one, Girasol, I don't have it in stock. People always <laughs> ask me and they continue to ask me, but... Unfortunately, that one is not in stock and I don't think it will be for a while just because the content of it and the story that I wrote about is about something really traumatic that happened to me while I was living in San Francisco and I'm just not ready to reopen that chapter of my life. And But I, I hope that I can in the future. Hopefully when I can, you know, like remember it because once you publish something, you're going to be reliving it over and over and over because you're going to be reading poems from it. People are going to be sharing poems from it. So it's como que un recordatorio constante. So when I'm ready to reread those poems without having some kind of feeling in my heart, I'll, I will restock it, but it, it won't be for a while. But the other two, they are in stock. Well, actually, here are the tears. I, you, we didn't cry. It's out of stock, but people can pre-order it on my website. And... Yeah, so all of my, my link is always on my social media for my website. Put it in the show notes so everybody can go purchase it. Um, so far, since you've been on social media, what's been your proudest moment as a creator, as an artist? I think my proudest moment has probably been, I think, being able to be the person that I needed when I was little and also a teenager has been, to this day, is 
como que todavía no me cae el 20, because I, sometimes me salen memorias como en, en Facebook, and like on Instagram, of things that I would post when I was in high school, or like when I was little, y son cosas que estoy haciendo ahorita, things that I wish that I could do, or sometimes I think back on my high school self, and I was so different when I was in high school, and I now realize that I needed a lot of love, <laughs> my dog, I needed a lot of uh, love and support, <laughs> and there was a lot of things going on in my family, and I just needed, I just needed love, support, and understanding, and I, I keep thinking about, imagine if I had had the poetry that I'm putting out now as a high school student, as an oldest daughter, as someone who comes from a, you know, Catholic, traditional Mexican family, siento que las cosas hubieran sido muy diferentes, y siento que yo también como persona hubiera sido alguien muy diferente, entonces, being able to do that now and going to do workshops and readings at high schools and college campuses, universities, community centers, and being able to be that person I needed to me, I think is one of the greatest things. And that's something I, I'm very proud of myself for that, but I'm also very grateful that the people who support me had led me to this point because I always tell people, yes, I do think that my quote unquote success or like the things that I'm doing now are because of my determination and passion and talent, pero también siento que si no hubiera habido pues el apoyo de la comunidad y de la gente, I would be, no, tu, no tendría todo esto. Entonces, it's not just me, but it's also the people who have supported my work. And I think social media has helped a lot in being able to push my work and people following me. And I think also, I think social media as well, sometimes there's also good things from social media. So as a writer, I think... It's one of the things that I appreciate the most. Like you build a whole community out of your poetry, out of your work, and now you connect with others that relate to the same things that you've been through, and it's awesome. I, I always had that that idea that social media is bad. Social media is bad. But as soon as I started my podcast and I started, you know, sharing my story and people could relate those mis traumas, <laughs> then I built <laughs> the community, and now I have. I mean, I met you through this. I've met so many people and. I wouldn't have done that if I had never got on social media. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I always tell people because I used to have also that view of social media, like ah, it's una pérdida de tiempo, or like people are just promoting, you know, like when you see celebrities just like flaunting their wealth and like being tone deaf and not doing anything, no aportando nada positivo a la sociedad. I'm like, oh, I used to think social media was, you know, to blame for this. But then I'm like, well, if people were to see their social media platforms as a tool that could be used for something good and for something powerful to help others, to add value to our society and to our world, then it could be something so much more different. And it could be, puede ser hasta una arma muy poderosa, se siento que si la gente se diera cuenta y usara sus plataformas para algo así, el mundo sería muy diferente, entonces, I'm glad that you are using your platform for something great, because also for you, like this podcast, Unbreakable Latina, I think it is amazing to be able to have spaces and create spaces where people can feel, you know, loved, supported, and seen, so I think you're also doing an amazing job. Thank you, I think we're part of this shift that is changing on social media, because now we're sharing, you know, not just our highlight reel, we're sharing things we've been through. We have bad days, we have good days, and we're normal humans. <laughs> Would you like to share some of your poetry with the listeners? Yeah, I have some. I have my book. This is the book I always take to, like, my my readings. <laughs> I have, like, the poems that I select. Let me see. I'll do the... Um, the Carta a las Ovejas Negras. I like reading this poem because I tell people, if you're in this workshop or if you're in this poetry reading event, it means that you're taking the steps to heal your inner child, your present self, and you're also taking the steps to break cycles in your family, which is something very, very powerful. And I tell, I tell people that I have so much love for the black sheep of their family, Las Ovejas Negras, because you know when we start healing and when we start on learning things, questioning things in our families and communities, setting boundaries, we get called all kinds of names. And I think you've talked about this in your podcast where we get called like mamona, sangrona, margada, <laughs> dramatica, all these names. Yes, all these names. And so this poem is for all these people that get called all these kinds of names because people are not used to you setting boundaries. So this is for you. <laughs> so it's called Carta de Amor a las Ovejas Negras. This is a love letter a las ovejas negras de la familia. To those who carry the weight of breaking a curse, no one before them had the tools to break. 
cargar en la espalda como mochila y cemento siglos llenos de dolor. You go to therapy because you know it needs to end y te conviertes en el chiste de las cenas los domingos por la tarde. Un abrazo en forma de carta y poesía para quienes por fin dijeron no. And now during holidays you see other families smiling at dinner tables and loving each other and you don't understand why that can be you. Es como sentir un abismo del tamaño de algún planeta. Saber que mamá y papá sufren heridas que nadie les ayudó a sanar. Your mother's inner child is hurting, but what about yours? You want something different, something better than the ways you were raised in. Pero nadie nos dijo que cambiar las cosas nos traería tanta soledad. But remember, it ends with you and no one after you will suffer like you did. Like you and your parents did. Abrázate muy fuerte. That one is one of my favorites. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Also share another one of my favorites that I always make sure to read. I'm sorry about my dog. <laughs> He's crying in the back. Um, I always share in my poetry readings and it's the one Casita Dreams. This poem is in both of my books, The Plants Are Burning and this one. Just because I always like to remind people that through our grief and through our trauma and our sadness and our heartbreaks, there's also hope and we can always create a better future for ourselves and rewrite our story and change the narrative because sometimes it might feel hard like we're stuck in this cycle of grieving and that we're taking just 10 steps back but remember that is always el resultado final va a ser mucho mejor so this is a poem for that casita dreams quiero una casita donde exista el silencio porque la mía de chiquita no lo había I want a house small and warm con ventanas que no tenga que abrir para respirar. Mi sonido favorito será la paz. I'll forget the sound of my mother throwing candles at my dad. I'll never think of my father crying and laughing or my mother angry and laughing. I'll never have to cover my ears or scream so that they'll stop and run to me. No me importa si la casa no es grande mientras que quepa el amor que me faltó ver. When my father became a ghost, the plants in my mother's garden turned brown. When I went to college, all my plants died porque yo misma quería morir. When I have a house, mi yo pequeñita será feliz. Tendremos plantitas que podremos regar con agua y no con lágrimas. Y juntas disfrutaremos del silencio que de chiquitas no pudimos tener. I love that one too. I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I'm sure I'm going to have you back. And where can people find you? Share your socials. Oh, I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> so, currently I'm active on Instagram and TikTok. And my, in, both my Instagram and TikTok are at Vianey Jareli. So the way that you spell my name, I'm sure you will have it on the, like the title or something. Mm -hmm. So it is Vianey Jareli. Thank you guys so much for listening today. I really enjoyed recording with Vianey. Don't forget to place your orders for your books and read her poetry. It really does help with your healing journey and just validates your feelings. I'll link her website and her socials on the description of this episode. And as always, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Unbreakable Latina, on Twitter at Latina Podcast, and subscribe to my YouTube. Hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!